what's going on guys welcome back to another video we out here in the shop today and today i pretty much want to do a little tech tip or a little technical video on some fuel tech stuff i've been working on and uh what i've figured out so far and i just want to share this information because the fuel tech community is fucking awesome all right so this is my buddy patrick's car we've been building this car for a a little bit over a year now just collecting parts trying to figure out how we're going to configure a car what we want to do uh it is all wheel drive we i'm gonna break down the setup to y'all so the long block is a k20 a2 uh block it has manly uh h-beam rods in it wisco 11 to 1 compression pistons uh the head is a tsx head it has no no i'm sorry it has a k20 a2 head uh, it has a uh, super tech spring retainers and uh, skunk 2 ultra one cams uh, it's a bze head it's ported all that jazz super baller ass head uh, motor's supposed to be rated to about 850 not on a horsepower probably really not going to push that that much with these rods because they are h-beam they will take a lot of stress especially with the all-wheel drive and the loading up and i'm not trying to hang a rod because <clears throat> they will break uh, if you load it up too much so turbo is a pulsar 67 uh 72 or 75 millimeter turbo uh ginormous ass turbo for a setup but we're going to make it work we're going to plm top mount twin gated with vs racing uh gates uh 44 gates the new piston style gates uh custom built uh up pipe done by me uh i have one more dump tube to build i built it previously but I had to redo it because I didn't have the stand rack in and after I put it in I realized the dump tube was in the way. Built this other dump tube, doing all push lock lines. Car is on FuelTech FT450 right now. It has an action twin disc clutch, stock trans and transfer case as of right now. CRV diff, uh, Freelander viscous coupler with chromoly drive shafts, 1310 U-joint conversions and flange conversions, uh, Skunk 2 Ultra intake manifold and PLM mounts, Hub City uh, rear T-bracket. Everything else is pretty much your basic stuff. It's on, uh, it's got electric water pump. And we got the fuel tech mounted up in here right now with this, oh, never mind. Take the battery off. We got 3D printed bezel, hybrid shifter, KLM staging brake. We got Hub City trail arms and uh we're gonna be using stock axles in the rear crv diff like i said before innovative diff mount <clears throat> right there uh hub city little control arms amazon fuel tank uh I believe it's a 20 gallon 15 or 20 gallon and we got a magnet fuel 750 in there pretty basic rundown of the car uh, I'm going to go over the wiring and what I found out in the last few weeks of wiring the car. All right. Say you want to build a streetish car. You're really, you know, you want more data on the car, but you don't really want to spend a bunch of money on an ECU. So as you know, right now, Hondata is about, you can find on the street between a thousand or you can buy it brand new for like 1500 bucks if you don't have a core for uh about and then if you want to you know have some sort of tucked harness or nice looking harness loon harness that's not a factory harness you either buy one of those uh jack spaniel harnesses for like 400 bucks or uh you can buy like a uh cj wine harness ride wire harness whatever you you want to buy you spend upwards of a thousand dollars on a harness so if you buy a k-pro brand new let's say twenty five hundred dollars in the harness and the ecu but still limited on data still limited on things you can do with the ecu xyz you know you want a screen blah blah blah, blah. so do your research you find out fuel tech F ft450 is about a thousand dollars and you can get the uh universal four cylinder a harness for about i believe it's five or six hundred bucks all right so you're at sixteen hundred dollars in the ecu and a harness and you have a display you have more data you have XYZ, everything's in front of you, you know, you have tuning capability, all that. So you get your fuel tech, 
you get a universal harness and you're like, damn, how am I gonna wire this thing to work with your K-Series? So through many of, not trial and error, but the only thing that gave me an issue was the crank sensor and that was my own fault. So the way the crank and the cam sensor comes from fuel tech right, so i'm gonna break down the harness for you so you got your main relay your injector relay your cool pack relays uh you got your switch power this is for your two-step input which you can convert this input to something else if you don't want to use two-step uh you can convert it to wheel speed whatever the hell else uh with the harness um you the only thing about the ft450 is you are limited on inputs and outputs so you get about six outputs and one free one free I mean one free input. Technically two if you don't use a two-step input. So say you want to do like uh, dome pressure or you want to do wheel speed um, and you want to run some another input sensor like you want to do back pressure or some dumb shit like that. Uh, you can to eliminate let's say fuel pressure you don't care about fuel pressure you got an external fuel pressure gauge or something like that uh you don't want a long fuel pressure or you don't want a long oil pressure something like that uh, you don't want you don't care about iats because you're on methanol um you know you can convert any of those sensors and you'll gain the extra input um but <clears throat> you gain you have the two-step input you have this connector right here this is for a wideband uh nano they sell just the nano by itself for a few hundred bucks so you also get that so uh, so it's just like if you're running a uh k pro and you buy uh what's it called you're in the k pro you want an am wideband you gotta spend 200 250 bucks on an am wideband for about 50 dollars more you can get a nano which also reads alcohol so if you want to run the car on uh nitro or m5 or something like that uh you can run that most am wine bands don't really read alcohol that fast or well so you know this is really fast you get the data log in you see also um you get a nano input you get uh your injector uh jumper johnny this is a another jumper right here you have to have this plugged in in order to run uh the coil packs that's a jumper for your coil packs or if you're gonna use the ft550 uh the 550 plugs into both sides so you get uh more inputs and outputs on the ft550 uh it's another ecu that's an ecu plug right there you got your wideband plug you got uh sensor plugs you got injector harness injector plugs tps plug that you're probably gonna have to convert to uh we where the hell is that at a tps plug somewhere i don't know so tps plug somewhere you gotta convert to a k-series tps or if you use a mustang tps like so, so i'm gonna convert to mustang tps uh ground to the battery ground to i mean power to the battery and then you got the sensor ground somewhere around here sensor ground right here uh, injectors, there are EV1, you can get adapters to do EV6 or EV14, whatever injector you're running. The coil packs, uh, I get to that after I get to the cam and crank. Alright, so wiring the cam sen crank sensor is pretty simple. So you have a crank haul and a crank VR. You're going to be using most of the wires from the crank haul because there's a haul effect sensor for the uh, K-series sensor. <clears throat> so you're going to use the crank haul. I'm going to wire this red wire right here goes to the middle wire on the crank sensor uh, which is your switch power and then you don't use this white one the white ones you don't use at all those are uh, inputs you don't use uh, so and then you put this on the ground side of the uh, crank sensor and then this thick red wire right here, this is going to be your signal wire. This is the issue that I was having with this car for about a week and a half before I asked the internet what I was doing wrong. This is the issue I was having. So I was using this red wire because it is red as the signal wire for, uh, well not signal wire, I was using it for the power wire and using the white wire as a signal wire, wire for the RPM signal. But this is the RPM signal wire. It is on the hall 
VR part. And I'll show you guys on that uh, car right there how I wired it on the harness. There's some of the plugs might not, nah, yeah, the plugs switch around, so it wouldn't matter. So it don't make sense for me to show you. So the cam sensor, which I think I have the cam sensor on that car to say, but you got cam VR and cam haul. So you're going to be using the cam haul effect side. And this is power, this is signal, and this is ground. And you just basically get the pinouts, which I can provide in the description down below of the pinout <clears throat> of how I wired it on the cam sensor. And basically all I did was get a scrap like, uh, you can go to a junkyard and get these plugs and stick them in your pocket. And <laughs> you can go to a junkyard, cut the plugs off of a, a harness and you know the main sent uh main plugs that you'll need is a cam sensor plug whether you're going to be running a k24 cam sensor i mean crank sensor or a k20 crank sensor you get whichever plug you're going to run with the corresponding uh crank sensor and uh you get the exhaust cam sensor uh for the cam part now if you're going to be running vtc uh, we're not running VTC on this car. We actually have the cam phased in at uh, 25 degrees. So if you're going to be running v VTC, I advise you to get a FT550. If you don't really care about VTC, you can physically lock the cam at 25 degrees. Uh, or you can just, you know, uh, use that extra input and you'll wire the intake cam phaser um, into the ECU and it'll take up an input. So that's pretty much it as far as the cam and crank sensors go uh the what the hell is this the coil pack plugs so you want to get the coil pack plugs too if you don't have none so for as far as the coil pack plugs you this is you're going to be your power and then you have a sensor ground you have the a ground that goes to something else and then you have a ground for the head so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this red wire this black white wire because that's a signal ground and you're going to take this gray wire and this gray wire so the red wire is going to be power obviously that goes to the uh um the coil pack i'll show you better on this car so if you look at all the coil pack harnesses you want to get a coil pack harness that has like the one through four from the cars uh so that you don't confuse yourself when you're wiring it up so on the outside, you're gonna have your uh, your ground. Well, your uh, your power source. Your power source is gonna be the white black wire, and your ground is gonna be in the middle. And then the gray wire will go to one of these uh, color wires that are on the end, and that's gonna be your signal wire for the coil pack. So, power. That's power. White black. I mean black white. I'm sorry. Black is ground color wires or the colored stripe wires i should say for all the other coil packs would be your signal wire so that's where the gray will go to gray goes here black goes here white black goes here so red will go here white black will go here brown goes here i mean red uh gray goes here <clears throat> so that's pretty much it i need to convert this one to a k-series plug and but for right now i'm just doing that i got the car fired up on it i plug a video into it right now i have the battery disconnected i'm still doing a little bit more wiring on it That's pretty much about it so i hope this video was somewhat informative to you guys i'm terrible at explaining things but i figured i'll put something out there because i did research for like i stayed up for like an entire day and just was on the internet trying to figure this out until i got stumped and then i started putting the multimeter to wires on here and i was like why is the signal wire how's the signal wire going to be a power wire at the same time so got on the fuel tech site and uh carlos riviera he helped me out and then gave me some insight on what to do and uh i got it figured out as soon as i rewired it i got crank signal 
I was here till like two o'clock in the morning. I figured it out. I mean, they answered my question at two o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> I got crank signal, pretty much went home. Next day came, put fuel in the car, fired it right up. But as always, comment, like, share, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.